happening in the world today it's and we're so far away from each other this is very awkward you know for me to be behind this camera 
I feel like I'm an actress. I want you to know that I'm not acting. Uh, I really am bringing you the word uh, from my heart. And I hope that you can, you know, appreciate it. I'm sure you do, but I just want you to know how I feel that this is, you know, a, a little awkward. Anyways, going past that, let's pray, ask the Lord's blessing upon the word today and that we can just, you know, be filled with his word and give us an understanding. Amen. So, Father, right now I pray and I ask that you would just, Father, open up our heart, open our ears. And Father, let it sink into our life and into our heart. And Father, that we would become a doer of that very same word that we're listening to, that we're hearing about, that you're giving us an understanding about. We ask this today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, you know, uh, one of the things that had been happening with um, uh, the book of Acts, Jesus has been crucified, right? And then we celebrated recently about the risen Christ that we serve. And you know, that amount of people that came to know him and believe in him and have faith in him was a community of believers that basically, when we go into the book of Acts, Luke begins to talk about what, you know, um, uh, being basically getting into the spirit and and he's talking about how Peter's preaching and we see that in the first couple of chapters and how many thousands of people were come uh, to the knowledge of their saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It was a very exciting time. It was also the very beginning of the Christian church, of believers. It was how Christianity basically was founded. And so we can see that the power of the Holy Spirit that had come upon them in the upper room basically endued them with this power and excitement. And even though, you know, they just saw what they had done to Jesus, all what it did was uh, that spark that they had just increased. And it was, they fanned the flame and they increased that amount of the flame that came forth basically in their belief and in who Jesus was, is, and is to be forever. They began to just be endued with this power. They, 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 they saw it. They knew it. They believed it. They, they had this taste of what Jesus did and they saw that he rose, that he ascended, that he had walked among them. They, there was no doubt about it and so how could they deny the power of that God, the power of our awesome God and Savior Jesus Christ? So when the Holy Spirit came and began to, with tongues of fire, uh, cloven tongues of fire upon them in the upper room, that was just, you know, the beginning of the Christian church. And so we're going to be going into the book of Acts today. I want us to turn actually into the second chapter of Acts. And uh, as you're turning there, I, I wanted to share with you, you know, that it's very important that as a person, whether you're a Christian or not, just as a person in itself, we need to be able to communicate well with others. We need to communicate well with our children, with our spouse, in relationships, in work relationships, our grandchildren. I mean, everybody that we come in contact with, it is so important to communicate. How many times have you been told something, walked away, and then you were trying to remember what it was that you were supposed to do or that they wanted you to do, and you couldn't remember? Because the communication was basically do this, but there was no details involved. So when you're talking with somebody, you have to have that eye-to-eye -eye contact with one another because it lets the other person know that you are listening to them. And we, we want to be heard. We want somebody that we can go, just as John the Beloved had laid his head and rested on the bosom of Jesus. He heard John. I'm sure that John was probably speaking words to Jesus that we'll never know about. And Jesus was probably whispering back into him or telling everybody there at the table. And he heard. So it's important that when we're speaking with someone that we listen to them. And so uh, that, that's the one thing. I know that with my grandson, 
that, you know, a lot of times he comes up and he's talking to me and he's saying things to me. And then I'm trying to also do things at the same time that he's talking with me and I'll turn away. And then he'll come, Grandma, you're not listening. And he pulls my face back to himself. And I stop and I go, okay, I've got to make the time. I have to, this is so important and this is so precious and this is so, uh, uh, you know, it effective, especially for me, for them, as we are seeing one another. Having that eye contact is just so important. Being able to listen to one another, listen to each other's concerns, listen to each other's um, uh, you know, uh, jokes and, and, and having a good time together and having fun and, and laughing and, and just enjoying each other's company, but also being there for one another when you have something that you want to say, something that nobody is listening to. I remember I saw one time a very old movie, and I remember the father going to the son. He says, can I talk to you? And the son says, I, 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 I can't right now, I'm too busy. And the next time, a little bit, you know, a while longer, or the next day, son, can I talk to you? And he says, I don't have time right now, Dad, I can't. And then again, you know, and finally, the father basically had it up to here. And so when he went back, son, I need to talk to you. I can't right now. Yes, he says, you're going to listen to me. And he stopped the son right in his tracks right there and got his attention. And we want each other's attention. There are times in our lives that we need to be able to speak to someone, that they want to hear your heart and that you want to hear their heart, that you want to pray for one another, be encouraging to one another and each other's concerns. So listening is so important. Another thing that is so, so important in, in our walk is a hug. Get, having that physical contact with someone. The Bible talks about having uh, greeting each other with a holy kiss. I know that Crown and Glory Church has always been so known for giving a hug. We were called the hugging church uh, for many, many times. And that's simply because, you know, uh, people walked in and everybody said hello and, and everybody was smiling and, and not just, you know, you go to shake their hand and instead you receive a hug. That is crown of glory and I'm so you know I'm so happy and I, I'm so proud to say that well, that uh, we've been you know hugging one another and loving one another it's just part of who we have become and that's the exciting part because those things are important to have the eye contact to listen to hug to be able to do that in fact you know, those things, are, and I'm not just saying these things are important simply because, you know, uh, research and, uh, you know, uh, medical things have determined that it basically really actually helps even our physical bodies. Number one, it boosts our immune system. How many of you are, um, you know, getting sick? How many of you are having things attacking your body? Well, you know, listening and hugging and having that kind of relationship, especially with a husband and wife. When a husband and wife have that connection, when there's that love that between them, that, that you know, acceptance of one another, the hearing of one another, it's like, you know, your, your immune systems are boosted. And it also reduces stress. It does. Could you imagine that if you didn't have the hugs and caressing of a loved one, how stressed you'd be? If you're already stressed, could you imagine how you'd be without it? Or maybe there is something missing in your life. Maybe you need a hug. You hear that saying, do you need a hug? Or you see those little, you know, emojis that are being sent out, you know, um, saying that, you know, I'm sending you hugs. You know, basically, and so it's just so important because it, we want to be accepted. But I want you to know today that whether somebody accepts you or doesn't, whether somebody hugs you or doesn't, I want you to know that Jesus hugs you. Jesus, just the way he was with the disciples, just the way that he uh, walked with disciples, hugged the disciples, um, showed them that kind of love, is the same way that we are. No, well, what happened, the difference is that Jesus no longer walks with us basically physically on this earth right now. But what he does do is what he did do is he sent his Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit 
the infilling of the Holy Spirit that came into us caused us to be able to love one another and to accept one another and to have that, you know, um, uh, love and that boldness toward one another. It, it reduces stress and it also uh, promotes an attachment in your relationship with another person. Could you imagine as a husband and a wife if you never spoke to one another, if you never listened to one another, if you never hugged one another, even held the hand of someone? There was a, um, uh, a experiment that was done, I think it was with a couple of monkeys, and they put them both in cages, and one monkey was being loved and caressed and held and everything like that, and it went on for many, many years to live. The other monkey, they stayed away from it completely, and they just let it, you know, they fed it and all of that, but they had no touching, no anything with it, and that one died early on because it's important to be loved. Now, Jesus sits at the right hand of God making intercession for us. So how can we get these hugs that we need from Jesus today? Well, he does it. He does it through you and I. When we have that Jesus come into our heart as be our Lord and Savior, he came into us. So he uses us as a vessel. Do you want to be used as a vessel? A vessel that is going to be used to be able to promote strength, to promote uh, uh, increase into somebody's life. You're planting into them with your love and with your listening and with everything. This is the same way that Jesus laughs with us, the way that he weeps with us, the way that he comforts us or he, that, he, that he's giving us his word. He, he does it through others. He does it through you and I. We're his spiritual body. And so we're part of the body. We're called the church, the church of Jesus Christ, the church of God. And so this is what we are. The Crown of Glory Church, you know, we've been doing this hugging for, for a very long time. And, and, and this is just something that's been a part of who we are. Now, as Jesus touched the lives of the early disciples, you know, with his physical body, now the Spirit basically touches our lives through Christ who lives in us. And because of that, we have his Spirit in us. So when we love someone, when we buy someone something, when we are consoling someone, or we crying with someone, when, whether we're praying for someone, these are the things that basically um, he's using. He's using you and I to be able to be that Jesus. Be Jesus to another person. Be Jesus. And so the early church had the Holy Spirit, and so do we. Now, we have the Holy Spirit, and God has been working through the Holy Spirit in our life so that people that we come in touch with, come in contact with, that we be able to express to them the love of God through our actions, through our life, who we are. So in Acts chapter 2, we see the, that Luke, who is the author of the book of Acts, here he is, he's talking about the early church. And basically, in Acts chapter 2, we see in verse 42, and what it says is that all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the last Lord's Supper, and to prayer. Okay? So they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Now, that word fellowship in the Greek that word is referred to uh, koinonia, ko koinonia, okay? And basically, it means a Christian fellowship. It's a, a communion. It's a fellowshipping with God. Um, and, but more commonly known, it's with the fellow Christians. And so it describes a togetherness that grows out of the common bond with Christ. Now that word fellowship, it wasn't just a group of people that were getting together for coffee, but it was somebody that was getting together for something much deeper, like God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. They love with, with one another with the very aspect of their lives, this abandonment to Christ. Now in verses 43 to 46, as we continue on, in the passage, 
says that a deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Amen? So we see, we see that happening there. Now, let's look at what it says in uh, the Gospel of John, if you'll turn to the Gospel of John. And, you know, just going back to that scripture that we just read in Acts chapter 2, and you'll be turning to John chapter 13. But in that scripture that we just read, it's, isn't it something right now that under our circumstances that... Um, it, we're referring to this passage of scripture today that they were meeting in homes. And you know, there was a lot of churches that when they said we had to basically close our doors, that we couldn't be meeting for, you know, more than 10 people. There was many, many homes, Christian homes, that were opened up to believers to gather so that they could have church and fellowship and communion with one another in the love of Jesus Christ. And so it's so important that impact of that koinonia cannot be underestimated. Basically, this is the bond that holds us together. It's um, meeting the real needs of another believer. And today, you know, we're called to have that kind of fellowship with one another, have that kind of a union with one another. And that is something that goes so deep that we recognize our union with one another and we treat one another with the way that Jesus would treat us. So what we express our love for Christ by expressing our love for his people. Do we hear that? You, you know how many people love God and hate their neighbor? You know how many people love God but don't want anything to do with so many other people because they don't like their attitude, they don't like their ways? Okay, this is receiving the love from Christ basically is expressing, we express our love for his people. We express our love for Christ we express our love for Christ. We express our love for Christ by expressing our love for his people. So it's so important, you know, uh, our emotions and all of that, they shouldn't play into this. It, this is how it is. This is a fact. We're not ran by our feelings and our emotions. We're ran by, by what God's word says and what he says to apply into our everyday life. The other thing is, is that we receive love from Christ when we receive love from God's people. So God is basically, you know, uh, how many of you know, I, I have never actually ever audibly heard the voice of God speak to me. But I know that there are many who have. But the likeliness of God picking up the phone and calling you is not really going to happen, is it? And so it's the intimacy with Him, the intimacy with one another, expressing the love of God in our actions, in our deeds, the kind of love that we express and receive. It's not about feelings. It's not about our emotions. It's the kind of love that gives other people what they do not deserve. But it's God's love, not your love. When you're giving love to someone, it's not your love you're giving. It's God's love that you're giving to them, caring for them out of the obedience of Christ. So in Matthew 23, when he says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And so on in Matthew chapter 23, he says, for as much as you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. This is what he says. And so in John chapter 13, uh, in verse 34 uh, and 35, this is what it says. And you've heard this on many occasions. But this is what it says. Dear children, in verse 34, I'm sorry. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. And by this, all men will know that you are are my disciples. How many people in the world, in your surroundings, in your community, know that you're a believer, know that you're a Christian, 
He says, they're going to know you. You're gonna, they're going to know that you're a disciple of Christ if you love one another. Again, loving God's way, not your way, God's way. This is how God spiritually hugs us. So to learn more about Him, to learn more about being a, a good person in relationship with God and, and being obedient to the call of God in our life, that's what we're talking about. Those are the things. God does speak to ordinary people. God does speak to us in, in, in many different ways. And you know that spark I was talking about, the fanning the flame, so important in our life to be able to have that passion, not be afraid, but to stand up and be counted, to stand up for what's right, to stand up for Christ. And so rekindling the flame that when the attacks come, you know when you're feeling all stressed and you've got a deadline you have to meet, you make the deadline and it was your best ever because under that stress there's a there's a molding and a making and there's that um, you know uh, fire that's just you're being able to be chipped away at and formed and fashioned into his likeness this is what he does so we're getting our hugs from God through one another we're getting hugs and love and I don't know about you but I need a hug oftentimes and I know that feeling of when that's the right kind of hug and so as you know we're fighting for our soul we're fighting to stay in contact with Christ we're fighting to stay strong because you know there's so much um, words of negativity that are coming uh, that are just basically saying you know you're not going to be able to buy you're not going to be able to sell you're not going to be able to, unless you have a chip implanted into your body there's so many things that we're hearing and you know the bible talks about those things that when you're a man or a woman of faith that god is your provider jehovah jireh and so there's certain restrictions and there's certain things that god talks about in his word the do's and the don'ts of the word of god and as a believer, you need to know what those are. Amen? That's the God that we serve. So we need to be like Him, look like Him, walk like Him, have Him just fill us with His Spirit. Amen? Okay, so Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just pray, Father, right now, that you would just open up our heart, Lord God, and that you would, Father, let us know your hug. Let us feel your presence. Let us know that because the day we said Jesus come into our heart and be our Lord and Savior, that was the day that our life changed. And now we express our love, Lord God, for you to one another, Lord God, in expressions of, of how we speak and our life, our lifestyle. Uh, Father, hugging one another, uh, listening to one another. Um, touching each other's lives, Lord God. So, Father, I, I just pray, Father, that as you move in our heart, move in our life, that we can just know, Father, with a surety which way to go, which step to take, uh, which direction to go in, Father. Lord, we hear you. We want to be like you. We want to move in your power and in your spirit, Lord God, and have you just touch us and let you, uh, you be a reflection through our life. Help us to be obedient, but we won't be obedient unless we know what your word says. So help us, Father God, to study your word, Lord, to be like you, to hear you, and be a doer of the word. So thank you, Lord. We invite you, Holy Spirit, take over. Thank you, Father God, for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.